Um, thanks for having me. My name is Amos Mack. I live here in San Francisco for like another week and then I'm moving to New York. But I've been a photographer my entire life, almost. Um, I'm going to tell you a little, little bit about myself and my projects and then have a conversation with Michelle T about that. I started shooting portraits of um, my single mother when I was around eight years old, um, back in the day when people would go on blind dates through newspaper ads, like before the internet, uh, and she needed images like classy portraits to send off to her personal ad responses. <laughs> so that was my first memory of um, taking portraits of another human being. Um, it took me a long time to find out how to channel my energy into the right, into my right, right areas creatively, although I've always identified as an artist as far back as I can remember. I've played around with a lot of different mediums, especially as a child, more um, print, and, like painting and drawing, and then later on I moved on to film and photography. I never felt that I would become a publisher, even though I've had like a lifelong obsession with magazines and print media. Um, about my education, I left high school a year early. I bounced around to various colleges, dropped out of a lot of colleges. <clears throat> I was never really a fan of academia. Um, eventually went back to school at the new school in Manhattan. And um, through a general studies degree, I got a bachelor's. But I feel like the majority of what I learned on how to start my own magazine, as well as my photography skills and design skills are all self-taught. <clears throat> my relationship to print media started very early. I've always had a strong connection with print magazines and books, um, especially now <clears throat> in the day where everything is online. I have an even stronger connection uh, with printed matter and life off of a computer screen. Um, I started a school newspaper in fourth grade, and I've always been like obsessed with teen magazines, like Tiger Beat and Teen Beat, and I think it kind of shows in my aesthetic of my current projects. Um, in my early teen years, I was given a subscription to Sassy Magazine when I was like maybe 11 or 12, and it changed my life because it showed me an alternative world where um, girls were not all like uh, makeup obsessed um, or boy crazy, and it just introduced me to subcultures and like alternative music and fashion that way. I was never involved in riot girl culture, but I did know that like the zine world existed, but I really didn't know how to get involved with that. It wasn't until later that I made zines, like in, the, like in 2000, 2001 in San Francisco, where I would photocopy photographs and hand them out to people in like a magazine form. Um, around this, that time, in the early 2000s, I started working with a magazine called Muffy, which was three girls from um, New College in Florida, I moved to San Francisco and started this magazine, and I did distribution for them and some photography, and I was really excited to be a pro part of that project, and um, that's actually how I met Michelle T. She was working at a bookstore, and I was distributing the magazine to Books, Inc., and that's where we first met. Um, and I started Original Plumbing Magazine, which is around on the tables, in 2009 with my friend Rocco. I always looked for representation of trans male experiences in magazines, but never saw it. From, you know, probably in the past like 10 years, I would always look for like trans magazines that were that I saw myself in, but never saw it. And um, I also felt that what what I did see of trans men in general in um, the media seem to be very hyper-masculine or seem to be kind of like on talk shows of um, just making people seem like, you know, they're at a zoo or, you know, they're on display in this way that um, it just made me feel uncomfortable that that was the only w way I would see trans men. So, um, although I do love talk shows <laughs> and appreciate them. It made me uh, uncomfortable that I did, didn't see anything like representing like the community that I was seeing in San Francisco and the culture going on in the world that trans people were involved in. So I'm going to show you some slides now of uh, original plumbing, the, um, the first six issues of it actually, some images, and talk about it. This is the first issue that came out in the fall. That's Sid Nova on the cover. And... Um, I began, this is Tuck Mayo, I'm going to pause this for a second. He was the, one of the very first guys that I photographed for Original Plumbing. And it was before it really existed as a magazine, it grew out of a photography project. And uh, I interviewed Tuck and photographed him, I, we did this shoot, and I sent in, the, in an interview to Butt Magazine, which is like this artsy homosexual magazine with like a really amazing aesthetic that I love. And uh, they 
it's pretty, they have like really humorous articles and everything. So they published the interview of Tuck, and in my bio at the end, actually, I actually want to go back to that, they, I wrote that I had a zine called Original Plumbing about trans men, but it didn't exist yet. So it was basically just me like forcing myself to do this project <laughs> because, I, because this one magazine appreciated what I had done and I was really excited about it. So after that, my inbox started to flood with responses about the project. And then I started photographing Rocco Kayatis. And at the time, I thought it was just going to be a little photo zine with some interviews in it. But he expressed wanting to help out and make it into something bigger. And we meshed really well together as friends. And then it became a two editor project and much more than just a photo zine. So here's, so that's how it started. It grew out of Tuck, Tuck's images, <laughs> basically. Here's more of Sid Nova. I'm going to talk more just about the whole project. I started photographing other friends besides Tuck and Rocco, or people that were in the community, specifically trans men. I decided to um, give, make, interview all of them so they had a platform to speak their mind and share their story honestly, concentrating not on the hormones or surgery that they have had or have or not had, um, but their actual lives outside of their trans identity. Of course, some of the models did want to talk about the aspects of hormones or surgery, but the majority of the time we're talking about like their real life, you know, their jobs or whatever they're doing, um, their day-to-day -day life, their hobbies, their family life. Um, right now, you're looking at a picture of the other editor, Rocco, with a Twinkie in his underwear. Just wanted to point that out. So, original plumbing seeks to represent trans men of all body types, ethnicity, hormone use or non-use post-op, pre-op, or those who choose to never have any operations at all, sexuality, masculinity, um, you know, basically your own, our own definition of, from traditional <laughs> masculinity to not so traditional. And it shows to, there's not one way to be a trans man. There's no right or wrong way. There's no specific step-by-step -step way in which you transition from female to male. You know, you create your own life and not everyone wants to go on hormones or wants to get a surgery. It doesn't make you any less male um, because you're not going through a specific process. Um, of course, it might mean that you can't legally change your idea of birth certificate depending on where you live, but that doesn't devalue the identity of being male or trans male or however you wish to identify. This is uh, Chris Vargas, who's a filmmaker in Oakland. He was in the second issue, he was the cover model which was all about hair. <laughs> this is Josh Cliff, and he wrote a piece on manscaping in the hair issue. He lives here in San Francisco. This is T. Cooper, and he's a novelist. He was interviewed in the second issue. A little bit about the title of Original Plumbing. Um, I first saw the term Original Plumbing on a Craigslist ad where I saw a trans man looking for a casual encounter, and he listed that he had original plumbing down below, referring to still having the lower parts that he was born with. So I really loved that, and I thought that it was a charming term, and I stole it and titled this project that was at the time just a photo project, Original Plumbing. And I thought it was a perfect mix of like underground slang and like in your, an in-your-face in statement about genitalia, uh, because as a trans person, in my experience, I mean, the first question that a, a complete stranger who, you know, you don't really have a connection with, um, who finds out that I'm trans, it's not unlikely that they'll ask me if I've had, like, the surgery, and they're referring to the surgery of my genitals, of, like, you know, wanting to know whether or not they can, like, you know, see me as a, a real man or not, I think. I mean, but really, who does that, kind of? That's, like, I, I always <laughs> wonder why that, um, it, like, who would, I would never go up to someone at a party and ask them if they had a surgery of Let's any start kind. start doing that okay. as, a, as an art project. Okay. Have you had the surgery, Michelle? Which one? You know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Uh, what else? Yeah, original plumbing has a sense of humor, and that's something, I think there's, like, too much sadness around, like, transsexuality in the media, especially. All you read about is, like, trans people being murdered sex crime related, you know, a lot, like, I mean, just yesterday I got, like, spammed about 65 times in my inbox about um, this, a trans woman who was being beaten at a McDonald's and how the, the people behind, who were working for McDonald's just sat there, did nothing about it, and videotaped it with their cell phones in this, you know, and just, and just 
put it all over the internet. But I mean, so I'm, I was sick of the sadness also, and I didn't identify with the sadness and um, the, some of the tragedy that seemed to flood the media about trans people. So that's why it felt it was really re easy for me to fill a void and create a space for trans men that didn't exist in this way. Each issue of the magazine has a different theme. It gets tied into the, each interview with the models. Um, we have a lot of fun with it. And the, I mean, so far it's, we've had um, the bedroom issue, the hair issue, sex and health and safer sex, the working stiff issue, that's the cover of the work issue. <laughs> and um, schooled issue, a fashion issue, and pretty soon the green issue will be out in a month. It's a quarterly magazine, and it's been, we've gathered international attention in the New York Times and Time Out New York. Um, we've been named Best Local Zine by the SF Bay Guardian, and Out Magazine put Rocco and I on the Out 100 list of 2010 of the most influential people in the LGBT community, um, right next to Michael Stipe. <laughs> wow. Um, Did you get to party with Johnny Weir? Yeah, Johnny Weir was at the party. He complimented me on my hair, and then the next time I saw him on television, he had my hairstyle. <laughs> True story. He was all, what are you putting it? And I was like, I don't know. I just don't wash it. <laughs> so this is Adrian, and he's a drag queen in London, and he's the first model that we featured who no longer had his original plumbing. So he actually talks about that in his interview. This is Red Jordan Roboto, who's a San Francisco author. He's self-published over 90 books. This is Simone, and he is a baker in Brooklyn. I'm just going to tell you about the models and before I move on and show you a, few, a couple different projects that I've done. This is the cover of the fashion issue. I met these guys on the street in, in New York, uh, Philadelphia, actually. And then I did a spread of uh, dandies and all these guys who live in Philly dress like dandies every day. And I just loved it. I also do editorial work and things like that. And I will, do I have time to show that work? Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. It's almost that time. This is Glenn Marla, who's a performance artist in Brooklyn. This is Sanyu, and he draws on all of his binders. Uh, he lives in New York. This is Griffin, he's from Australia. In the most recent issue that came out, the schooled issue, we featured teachers and tutors and students. This is Dento. He's a baking student who lives in Toronto, hence the whisk, baking. <laughs> <laughs> Kay is a teacher in Los Angeles. This is Lee, and he, this, these were never published, actually. He's a teacher who's also very into identifying as a sex pig. <laughs> <laughs> teacher by day, yeah. sex pig by night. Not so different And this everyone. is a spread for the schooled issue where I had all the models come and dress as, you know, quintessential high school, like nerd or punk or jock. These are my favorites from I this love particular that one. Picture. <laughs> My response to the Dan Savage, it gets better campaign. <laughs> this is Ian Harvey, Athens Boys Choir. Here's an image of my friend Tuck and I, the self-portrait. So good. Where I forced him to wear mesh. This is Berlin Reed, and he's showing off his uh, post-operative scars. He had just had top surgery. The next image you'll see, he's still bandaged up over his nipples. He wanted documentation. 
A lot of times my friends who get surgery, this is like the most meta picture ever. So I just took this yesterday. This is my roommate, uh, James Darling. He's a performer. And he's holding a picture of himself three months after he got his double mastectomy top surgery. And then this is him yesterday. So that's, uh, it was a year yesterday that he had gotten top surgery and he just wanted that documentation. So as for editorial work I've done, I always seem to focus on queer identified people and use them as models. This is Margaret Cho. Um, these, these are images are Seth, of Seth Bogart that were in Italian Vogue. He's a queer performer, singer. <laughs> this is Austin Young. He's a photographer, queer photographer. Alexis Penny, performer here in San Francisco. Tara Jepsen, performer. <laughs> this is Daniel from the, he used to be in the band Making Friends. These are images from the Ironing Board Collective blog where I did a fashion shoot with Michelle T as the director of the shoot. And shot these in, uh, in Arizona. And then I'm gonna, I'll end my images with the, my latest project, which is called Trans Lady Fanzine, which is a project that will, oh, actually, let's talk about trans women first. This is Justin Vivian Bond the singer performer in New York who just uh, started to transition physically, hormonally. This is Dave End, who performs here in San Francisco and all over the place. These are all people who identify on the trans feminine spectrum. This is Ben McCoy. And this is Julie Blair. And Trans Lady Fanzine is a project that'll come out in June. It goes back to the root of what made me want to start Original Plumbing. And uh, it's like the personal connection between photographer and model and both people wanting trans visibility. And this one is based around trans female people. It's a very personal, intimate project between myself and one other person. This I uh, issue features Zachary Drucker, who's a performance artist, filmmaker, and a teacher in Los Angeles. It's a space created to showcase a large body of work produced in collaboration between two trans artists. It's about the connection that creates the art, about the accessibility of fine art through printed matter produced in a way that people can take it home with them instead of only seeing it hanging in the window of a gallery or glowing on a computer screen. Um, it's about the model being in charge of every aspect from the look and location to the images in the book down to the text she wants to publish as well as the title of the actual periodical. We went back to her home of Syracuse, New York where she grew up and we um, spent about a week at her parents' house and shot all these images at all the old haunts that she had not been to for about 10 years. So that's what you're seeing now. That's her and her mother, her biggest fan. <laughs> all right, so that's my images. So for you all. good. Clap for those. They're beautiful. <laughs> Whoops. So. Me and Amos Mack just spent 34 days in a van together because I um, curate and travel with a performance art tour called Sister Spit, and Amos was one of the seven, um, six performers that I picked to bring around the country. So we've just come back from... Very far. Yeah, from all over the place, and from Amos showing the majority of what you saw um, all across the United States at art spaces and universities and stuff like that. And, um, and before we start even talking, it's, it's really interesting. I mean, I, I can see that there's a lot of queers here, but um, it's been interesting going through various places in the United States and not with big audiences or small and not necessarily understanding how sophisticated people's understanding is about 
the existence of trans people in the world and everybody's kind of take on things. So I, I almost feel like we need to like cover basic bases about what the fuck we're talking about before we even Like a little go. trans 101? Like a little trans 101 workshop. Fun. You want to do it? That sounds yeah. great. I bet your How about your a dream, trust exercise right? also? <laughs> we're all going to do trust falls with each other. <laughs> so, because, um, you know, I know that, you know, where it's, you know, presumably here to talk about identity and whatnot. And, um, and I think it's really interesting because I know that for, um, for many people who are trans, they do identify as being trans, and then mm -hmm. there's many people who are trans who do not identify as trans. Right. And do you want to talk about that? Do you want to school What do you want to know? I don't know. What's, what's up with that? <laughs> what's your, well, what do you, everyone... what's your identity? <laughs> what's your deal? Tell us your My story. I identify as an artist. That's deal with cool. it. I like that the best. Yeah. I identify as a Polish writer. That's cool. I like that I like too. that. Thank I can you. appreciate that. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but OK, so. You know, I think that um, there's so many things that are happening with someone who's, okay, first before I go into that at all, it's so weird to be a non-trans person kind of talking about trans stuff in this way. And I, I know that there's a few trans people in the audience. I kind of want to invite anyone who's trans in the audience to kind of fling up a hand and jump in, even though there's not supposed to be a QA. and <laughs> a I just think it's cool to do that because it's kind of odd to be um, kind of talking about, well, what, yeah. you know what I mean? So um, do you identify as genderqueer? No, I do not. What, is, what does genderqueer mean to you? Genderqueer, I believe, I mean, I don't know that, per, I don't know, what, I mean, I think we all define our own existence and terminology around everything. Okay, around take a step. Identity. We're going to play, explain but, that, we're going to play, play define that term. Transgender. Someone who doesn't identify, <laughs> someone do who doesn't identify uh, as the, the gender they were assigned at birth. Okay. I mean, right, loosely, right. loosely, let's say that. Okay, all right. Transsexual. Someone who lives full time as the gen as like the gender they feel they were they they identify with okay which is that does not match up with their birth certificate usually gotcha right cisgendered someone who's not trans you are cisgendered i am cisgendered why am i cisgendered because i was born with a female body and the culture expects me to identify as a female and dress like this and i'm into it <laughs> so I'm cisgendered. It works for me. But it's actually really important because I think that one of the ways that trans people get othered in our culture is they're just seen as like, like so, so many people who are cisgendered don't even think that they have a gender. They just think they're like normal or something. Right. And in fact, no, you have a body and you have a gender and, you know, there you go. And so it's, it, I think it can be really revolutionary and helpful to kind of furthering the various trans causes for, um, for non-trans people to know that they're cisgendered. You two have a gender. It's just you don't you don't get chicken wings thrown in your hair on public transit because of it. Right. Unlike trans women who maybe will get a chicken wing thrown in their hair. That's a true it's story. It's true. It is a true story. Okay, so gender queer. Gender queer, someone who does not want to choose or doesn't identify with either, mm -hmm. or you know, or either binary. You know. Yeah. So. Yeah, because there's this idea of the gender binary yeah. where there's male on one end and female on the other. And some people are very naturally binary gendered. Just bring it back to me again. I am. <laughs> um, I'm just, I feel like a big lady. Um, and then other people are just kind of like, I don't know, man. I'm yeah, both, I'm they, neither. And Fuck you, you shouldn't have to. You shouldn't me. have to choose. Yeah. If you don't, so, so. And we're pro all of it. And so that's great. Um, okay, so there, we've, start, we've finished that. Um, <laughs> I wanted to um, also, like, I mean, obviously, you, you, you identify as trans. Yes. You do. I wanted to know, is that something that you feel internally, like, you identify as a trans person, or is that something that's flung on you? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, By, I like, feel, other people. Right, I, right. I feel like, it, you know, if, if a person is trans, I think it's often sometimes the only thing that non-trans people can see about them, so you're, kind of getting, you're constantly getting transed. I feel like I do identify as a trans mm -hmm. man mm -hmm. uh, much more than a man or like I don't I don't crave to live a cisgendered male experience I'm really happy with the experience that I've you know lived so far and I feel like there's a reason why I was born in the body I was mm -hmm. and there's um yeah so I do identify as a trans man myself not because of what people fling, fling on me but then you know it comes when you're in but also I'm very comfortable where I live and mm -hmm. I'm always in urban cities mm -hmm. but it's like different when you're in small towns, and that's when I would not like to be out and be talking about, just so you know, I'm a trans man. Right. You know, when I'm like in rural West Virginia at a truck stop, yeah. I'm not going to go. Well, that's interesting. It's one of the things actually that like grabbed me about the, the last two panelists talking about, um, about SL 
um, and about how embodiment is relevant to placement and that like a place can totally affect yourself. And I mean, I just think we just had that experience. Yeah, on the I tour. mean, like, you know, not even as a trans person, I had that experience being on tour. Like, you really feel who you are, like, who you are, like, you know, just presuming San Francisco is your comfort zone, being mm -hmm. what it is, and then to go out and to, to go through so many different parts of the United States and to feel your um, sense of yourself shift a little bit. Yeah. What was that like for you? Um, for the most part, I felt. I, I don't know how much I really felt the shift as much as I just didn't want to open my mouth because I was not because I felt like it was scary to be a trans person where I was, but because I sound so incredibly gay when I talk mm -hmm. that I didn't feel you're like gay. I didn't feel like toning it down. Yeah. So I just I just would rather not speak. Yeah. So I just didn't want to. I mean, that was the weirdest thing being like noticing when I would speak and then guys or you know truck stop people who were helping me would you know, <laughs> give me an eye, or just like act different that they, you know, that I was a little too flamboyant sounding for them or, you know, then I realize I, I hear myself speak. Yeah. Just like I can hear myself speak now. So you weren't having Very, sp like trans like, issues per se out in America. You were having no, gay the, issues more. Yes or no? Yeah, I think so. And whereas we had a, a, a because no one's knowing that I was actually having gender issues. That was everywhere. intense. That yeah. was more. That was very. Um, I could every totally relate to that from past experiences, mm -hmm. but not anymore as yeah. much. Yeah, everyone had to have a buddy when we hit certain areas. Mm -hmm. Bathroom buddies for everyone on the tour. The tour is really queer, so everyone looks like a weirdo. <laughs> um, so, do you feel a part of? Um, GLBT community, like what do you think of that whole thing, of I, the idea of a GLBT community and do you feel like there's a place for you and for the work you're doing with Original Plumbing in that? And I know that's very vague, but right. it exists. I feel, I've always found it really interesting that GLBT includes the T because GLB is sexuality based and the T is, you know, it's gender based, gender identity. It's interesting, it's mm -hmm. interesting. I've been thinking about that a lot lately and wondering, um, I, I feel like a really, I feel really passionate about being the T mm -hmm. and like almost having it being a separate, you know, cause of um, just T, just a big T. Yeah, the T parade. <laughs> I mean, yeah, so like if you're not necessarily interested in sort of being part of that, like what is what's your alternative view? Like what do you think? Like I know that um in the text that you were reading on tour which um uh for the fans lady trans lady fanzine that Amos is doing his um his letter from the editor is basically functions as a letter to the model, and I know that there's one part where you're talking about you want your 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 trans separatist island. Yeah, well, yeah. it's a, the the, fa the trans transsexual separatist island I construct in my brain. Yeah, what is it? Oh, that's just a place where all trans. Is it like people, it's like it's, it's like second, it's like second life it's in second your life, brain. but only transsexuals, mm -hmm. and no one else can go there. Of course, but I'm not actually a separatist. It's just like a little. Thought. It's just thoughts that I have, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you, know, you don't actually want to go through this because some of my best friends are cisgenders. Thanks. <laughs> but I feel like that was, um, you know, it's just a fun thought. And it's also kind of making you think of the importance of building a strong trans community mm -hmm. of not just, you know, trans male, trans female, and everyone in between the trans spectrum. Mm -hmm. I think that it needs to be we need to like really come together. With Are that. you seeing and that build? I mean, I know that you can see like it's it's been really visible just as a person living in San Francisco who like my career community contains like a ton of of trans people and mostly trans guys to see like a trans male community really sort of like erupt and cohere and come together. Is there something that's happening that is sort of like that 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 is trans men and trans women kind of coming together? I notice can you repeat, can you say that again? Do Sorry, you see I, any sort of cultural, cultural movements or community kind of movements that are happening right now or that, that is more trans men and trans women coming together I in see, community? I see a lot of like trans men coming together at like original plumbing events specifically mm -hmm. I, uh, in various cities and I see trans women at these events and depending on the city there's a lot more tran trans women than there are in other cities. Mm -hmm. And it's awesome that there's a place for all of us to come together and to you know, take part in like a celebration of, even if it's like, it's for a magazine, but it's still really awesome because usually it's like either a gay dance club or like it's like a dyke club or it's a, you know, whatever, but it's never, and it's always inclusive of other sure. people on the outside at least, and it's supposed to be, but you know, it's, there's not a lot of spaces where it's all mostly trans people with their allies as they are included as well. Yeah, that's 
It's cool. just an interesting thing that happened, mm -hmm. not something that was necessarily planned. But that's just what happened. Do you want to talk a little about the events that you do for Original Plumbing? So um, Original Plumbing's a magazine, but it's actually becoming more of a little cultural movement. Well, we have, every time there's a magazine release, we have release parties in whatever cities that we mm -hmm. can get to, usually one in New York and um, San Francisco. We've had events in Los Angeles and uh, Toronto and other places, but there, and Philadelphia. We've had readings. We had readings in Philadelphia where we concentrate on the literary aspect of original plumbing and we live read the um, interviews back and forth, sometimes acting out different people oh, if the person great. can't make it. And we've had art, I've had shows that are more art show centric where my photos will be up for one night and there will be films playing in the back room and, those, and um, there's interactive art art projects going on and that'll that we had one a part, party like that in Los Angeles which was very special and we've also had film series revolving around original plumbing in Los Angeles at Outfest last year in oh. LA there was the original plumbing evening where it was just all trans filmmakers oh, that's and great. they had us down there for that and that was all that also acted as a release party in after the um, film screened and then also dance parties which is you know where what we have here in San Francisco and we'll have performers and either music, music dances, and, or whatever mm -hmm. is. I feel like these are, like, I feel like those things are serving, like, a really deep cultural need. Like, they seem really, I don't know, do you want to talk about that? Like, have you seen, like, how have you seen the culture, how long have you been doing original plumbing now? Uh, since the fall of 2009. So have you seen, just in those two years, the culture sort of grow and come together? I have. Like, what have it you seems seen? to be more of, I mean, it's just, it's just out there. It's visible. Yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit about the, um, the literary content in original plumbing? What's... What's um, in there? Well, it's a, there's an open call f for writers all the time, and we it's on an open basis, so we're always getting different submissions. Although they are, we have themed issues, so the person will know about the theme beforehand, and they mm -hmm. can, however they want to, you know, whatever evokes a response around that theme, they mm -hmm. can go for it. And then Rocco and I just go through it and choose our favorites. Usually, only a few can make it per issue, but. Off, we'll also put them on the website because oh, we have cool. a blog that's daily updated. So good. Um, how has your artistic process and your artistic interests changed as you've transitioned, or through your transition, or because of it? I got like a lot more focused on what I wanted to do a lot, and also a lot happier as a person in general. You mm -hmm. know, when you trend. Did that well, affect your art? Were you making gloomy art before, and now you're making happy? I art? was making. <laughs> well, I was really. I was making like scattered art, and also very. I what feel was like your art pr previous? Like, like, what are some examples? Nothing of that was finished. I mean, just really? like you know, projects for like school and uh -huh. photographs of people who I felt were muses, and that mm -hmm. was sorry. That was um, I've had art, I had art shows all the time, or I was part of group shows, but it all seemed very scattered. I was always looking for something to like tie it all together. I needed a main focus, mm -hmm. and but it was after I you know had transitioned that I started OP, but. It just kind of gradually got to this space where I could concentrate on and kind of pinpoint what was important. Mm -hmm. I mean, that changed. Besides that, it also like when I got sober, it changed everything as well. How did so it change? Was, I was able to constant, like completely do what I wanted to do and not. I no longer had any um, second guessing on what was in what was important or what how to put my work out there. So it's just a whole process of just increasingly focusing yeah, your art. Completely. That's cool. Um, how do you, do you feel that um, being a trans identified or an out trans artist has both impeded your like artistic career and how has it helped it or aided it? I think it's helped it because it's, because I s started like a transgender magazine, it was, uh, got a lot of people's attention. Mm -hmm. And through that, people found out about my work and found out about past projects that had been ignored because they didn't know that I existed, and then when they found out that this magazine existed, and like a photographer started it, and then they were able to look on my website and see past projects that I had done, mm -hmm. and from there get offers to you know collaborate with other people. So mm -hmm. that is like a total plus that because it's a trans magazine, it was noticed, mm -hmm. and then from there you know I was able to get meet other people to collaborate with. But then I guess I don't even know how it's hurt it. I can't even say because I don't. Think That's of it that way. I don't being, think yeah. of a negative aspect of it. I'm just like grateful that I'm able to produce work and that people are enjoying it, mm -hmm. and it seems to have a positive influence. Mm -hmm. um, how I mean, you began original plumbing as a way to sort of like document 
the trans male culture around you that you, you weren't seeing anywhere. But like at this point, having been out and kind of really exploded, do you feel that original plumbing is, is actually sort of um, shaping trans culture by its existence rather than just being a document? I think it's documenting people that are like how is creating it work. I think, do you think it is? I don't, I don't really know. It's hard because I'm so in it mm -hmm. to know like what, how it's I think it is. <laughs> As from, from the outside, I, th I do. But I think, I think it it's is. like getting people who are not net, like other, like trans male artists or trans male people who are doing things that might, they might necessar not necessarily want to like, you know, pat themselves on the back for. But I'll think it's interesting and I'll, you know, feature them. And then it's kind of like that kind of adds them to the pot of what's happening in our culture. Yeah. You know, because I mean, they might not be super, you know, extroverted about their art or about their, you know, their life as an activist or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And I just think that it's a place to kind of house all of these people's stories yeah. and what's happening. And it's in the crucial because it gives people a reason to kind of act on their impulses to make art and to be creative when actually a lot of times you, you wouldn't necessarily. And I just feel like, you know, people who are in marginalized communities, I feel like often there's this this defeatist sense that there, people don't necessarily want. Like, if I made this thing or created this thing, what would I even do with it? I'm so I'm so cut right. off. Right, like they'll like, seem like oh, what is, is People Magazine going to run a, a yeah. special on me? But probably not because you know people. It's like yeah, but it's aspirational. It's like oh, I could do this thing and it could be important and it could be in this magazine and it, it, you know it might right. sound like a little thing, but I just know from having run kind of queer centric you know um, literary nights and stuff like that, it gives people this sense that like oh, if I actually act on this, there's some place it can go, and that's actually what helps build you know, artistic communities mm -hmm. that, that, you know, for, for marginalized groups of people. Speaking of, what is trans male culture exactly? Since I don't even know. Come on. I mean, I just threw those three Come words on. together. What were you thinking? I was thinking that I didn't really see any. So I, I thought that I knew it existed. So if I put that title on the magazine, it would all come to me. And it did. Right? That's cool. Does it seem like it worked out? I think so, yeah. Way? I mean, I know what you're talking about. Um, I want to talk to you about this, too. So <laughs> I <know>. like, <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> um, Michelle. Yeah? So let's... We're wrapping uh, it up now? We're wrapping it up. Okay. All right. So is that, do we have time for one more question or yeah, one more thought? Do, and then we can continue to have the, the conversation in other ways. Yeah, go ahead, ask another question. Are you sure? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Because I had this... Um, I, I did want to have a comment on sort of... Um, the whole idea of having a trans person represented in a in a um, event that's around sort of radical identities or a customizable body, because I just think yeah. it's, it's maybe a little problematic. Mary, what do you think of it? Like, <laughs> I I just I feel like when I think about a, a, a body being customized, I think I put Latisse on my eyelashes because I want longer eyelashes. You know what I mean? And I don't know if that's the same as somebody transitioning. Do you want to speak to that? I feel that. Do you feel like you customized your body by transitioning? No. I feel like I, I survived as a human being that way. I feel like I saved my own life by transitioning. I feel like it wasn't necessarily, it was not a choice, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. It was something that I think everyone has their own identity, I, I, you know, a way to relate to having a surgery or, you know, changing their gender legally. But I think that, I mean, I always, I felt like this in my brain for like a very long time, way mm -hmm. before I ever customized my body, mm -hmm. you know? So um, it doesn't feel like it was a chosen thing. Like it wasn't just, it wasn't something like just changing my outfit mm -hmm. or getting a new haircut, mm -hmm. you know? Or getting Latisse on your eyelashes. Right. It's look like that. Okay, <laughs> I guess, okay. So I guess we're done. Right. And yes. So thank you. Yep. My name is thank you. Michelle T. Okay. So now we're moving into part three, where we're going to, as you've been looking, I don't know if you've noticed, but we have these tables here. And what we're going to do is we're going to have, uh, we'd like to begin a discussion. Um, and we put out two questions um, for folks to think about. And on that side of the room, we've asked, does one need a body to have identity? Can a real identity exist in the virtual world? Um, <clears throat> and then over here, we've asked, what do, I mean, I'm gonna modify it a little bit. What do we lose or gain, if anything, when we customize our bodies online or off? So what we're hoping to do with these tables is now, with our inner row, like right here, 
if you all could turn your chairs toward the table, we're going to create um, a little discussion area. So if you just turn around this side of it, and for you folks, if you turn your chairs on the other end, what we're going to do is have you all join these areas, including our panelists, and continue the discussion. And you can also uh, raise questions or discuss any uh, issues that might have come up for you. But the idea is to have smaller group discussions. And in about 15 minutes or so, we'll call everyone to switch sides so you can um, join that conversation with that question. Um, our idea is to have smaller conversations that are focused on these topics. So if we could just have you folks come around. I want to invite you.